Well, G'day Junior Tuckies and welcome to this theory video dealing with viruses, bacteria and fungi in some of the uh, grade 11 work that you're going to be going through. My name is Mr P and I'm going to be taking you through this theory video. So the first microorganism that we're going to be looking at is that of a typical virus and we're going to be looking at this image over here which shows typical virus structure. Um, we can see that the, the first identifiable part to the structure is the glycoprotein and what this is, it helps the virus to enter the body cells um, of the cell that it wants to infect. Um, so this is quite an important structure to the virus. The next we're going to see the protein envelope. So this is basically going to be the protective outer covering to the inner viral uh, genome. So this helps the virus protect its genetic material and then also helps the virus evade the immune function of its host body that it's infecting. Then we're going to see the capsid, which is labeled next over there. And the capsid basically does the same type of function as the protein envelope, except now this is to the viral genome itself, so the genetic material on the inside. We can see that this genetic material over there is double-stranded, quite easily seen in the image over there. So this would most likely be our DNA of the virus. Okay? The genetic material is what is going to infect the host cell. Um, and it's going to be using the host cells uh, sort of like biological machinery in transcription and translation um, to, to help itself become either replicated or expressed in that host cell. Uh, a couple of tips when it comes to this section specifically is that we will need to know how to draw each of these microorganisms and then secondly definitely be able to use our scientific drawing skills. So a couple of the marks that we're going to be getting in this section are going to be getting, we're going to be getting for our scientific skills particularly in the drawing section. Uh, the next microorganism is our typical bacillus. Um, which you can hopefully see in the structure in front of you over there. We're going to identify the unique parts to this. And the first part is the outer slime capsule or slime layer. Uh, what this does is it helps the bacteria um, prevent drying out. With the fancy word there or the biological word that we refer to there is desiccation. Um, the slime layer also helps the bacteria stick to uh, surfaces. Um, where it will then obviously replicate. We have the cell wall just under the slime layer made of peptidoglycan. Um, what this does is it prevents the bursting of the bacterial cell from the osmot osmotic pressures that could be changing in the internal environment. So that internal pressure that pushes out um, that cell wall prevents the bursting of our bacterial cell. We're going to then look at the cell membrane and a typical function of a cell membrane here, just controlling what moves into and out of these cells. You'll see that we've got a cytoplasm as well inside of the bacterial structure. And here we'll find ribosomes for protein synthesis. We'll also find a chromosome. So in other words, this is the location of the genetic material of the bacterial cell. Um, and if it is highly concentrated in one part of the bacterial cell, then we would refer to this area as the nucleoid um, of the genetic material. We see sometimes that bacteria also have a plasmid. So this is just accessory um, rings of DNA that we find inside of the cytoplasm as well. And you can see it quite clearly there in, in blue. Now, identifying the flagella. Okay, this is quite an important part to the structure of a bacterium because the flagella is a thread-like structure which allows the bacterium a little bit of locomotion, so some movement. Um, also, some bacteria, but not all, also have additional structures, in this case hair-like structures called fimbriae. All right, um, these allow the bacteria to attach to surfaces and then including or included are little pillae structures which uh, are present which help bacterial cells to attach to each other um, to allow for reproduction. What we see here, typical rhizopus, so we're looking at bread mold um, in this structure over here and I'm going to be la labeling the three different 
types of hyphae or the three different hyphae that we would find as part of a typical bread mold structure. You can see we start with the rhizoid which is our root-like structure and I don't say root structure because it's root-like. Um, this is a thallus organism so we don't have any true root stems or leaves. So we've got that rhizoid over there, we've got the stolon um, which allows for horizontal growth of this bread mold. And we've got the sporangia 4, which is the vertical structure, which will eventually hold up um, the sporangium, which is going to be releasing the spores into the environment for the spreading of the bread mold. We have there the spores being released by one of these sporangium. And also this entire structure, which includes the sporangia 4, stolon, rhizoid, sporangium. This is all the mycelium body. So this large bread mold structure or the larger structure, the network of hyphae, we can refer to as the mycelium. Now this body form we refer, refer to as a thallus. And that's a, an important bit of terminology because a thallus gives or implies that this structure does not have roots true roots, stems or leaves. So we wouldn't re refer to any type of stem, any specific root or uh, leaf-like structures in this specific plant or this specific organism over here. Okay, now just taking this a little bit further, um, previous papers have, have asked the question of um, hyphae and their specific structure. So in drawing a cross-section and a longitudinal section of a hyphae, we can identify some very, very specific structures here, and they are important for us to be able to draw as well. So in this longitudinal structure and the cross-section, we see the cell wall made up of chitin on the outside. We can see the nuclei present inside of the coniocytic cytoplasm. Um, this is very, very important to note because it is a continuous cytoplasm um, in which we find multiple nuclei. So what we can see here is it's multinucleated. Uh, you can see that label there in the middle. We can also see that there is a continuous vacuole that runs through the hyphae as well. All right, so this is the structure of the bread mold coupled with the, uh, coupled with the other microorganisms that we've just done. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Um, join us for a couple of the other videos in this section dealing with microorganisms. Uh, get yourself a copy of the worksheet along with the memorandum as well as the theory booklet um, and hopefully we can better your understanding of microorganisms as we work through your grade 11 content. Thanks very much and join me again.